Lou Machine Gun Batera, member of the BCA Hall of Fame, winner of a world championship, perpetrator of a high run of 267, man who holds the world record for uh, pocketing 150 balls in 21 minutes. One of the game's most articulate spokesmen and unquestionably the fastest player alive. Lou, why do you play so fast? Well, Mort, that's a real tough question in a way. Uh, everyone tells me that I play fast because I managed to get out of the room and get other things done, but I think I started playing fast when I was younger because I used to cut school once in a while and uh, I was afraid my dad would walk in the room where I was playing. Okay. Well, tell me how, how, how you did get started in the game. Well, when I was uh, seven years old, my mom passed away and my dad owned a billiard room. And the only way he could really keep an eye on me was have me report to the billiard room directly after school. And I would do my homework in there and then I would play pool the rest of the day. Did you have a hero in those days? Who was your... Uh, if, who was your idol as a pool player? Well, my idol as a pool player was a man named Irving Crane, who I'm sure most people have heard of. Uh, he lived in Binghamton, New York at the time, which was, I believe, only about 60 miles away from, from uh, Pittston, Pennsylvania, where I was born and raised. Uh, but Irving is a rather precise and uh, deliberate player, as opposed to you. Well, I, I won't say that I've copied his style, but uh, I have learned quite a bit from watching the gentleman play. Uh, I got to meet Erwin Rudolph, who was a great friend of his, and they wanted to take me under their wing when I was about 14, 15 years old, and my dad wouldn't allow me to leave the state at that time. Okay, when did you first leave the state? When did you go out for the first time and venture into uh, major uh, pool tournaments? Well, I first ventured into major pool tournaments when I was uh, 26, 27 years old, 26 years old. In uh, New York City, they had a world tournament, and I tried to get myself invited, and they wouldn't invite me. They told me to get a reputation first, so I went out and beat all the local champions and top players who were playing in the world tournament, and then I got invited back the following year. Mm -hmm. How many major tournaments do you suppose you've played in over the years? Uh, not as many as most people will tell you. Uh, it seems like my name has been around for a lot of years, but as I said, it's because I started when I was 26 years old, and I've probably only played in what I consider about 18 or 20 major tournaments in my lifetime. Yeah. Uh, unlike a lot of the top players, uh, you seem to have a very stable family life is evidenced by the fact that you have, as I understand, seven children, is that? Yes. And um, uh, was it around the 60s or 70s you moved uh, to California? How did that come to pass? Uh, in 1969, I had a billiard room in Pennsylvania, which, uh, because of the drug problem being what it was, I decided to close it because uh, I wasn't going to contend with that type of situation and decided to move to California with my family in 1970, and I've been out there ever since. Now, since you've been in California, you've had uh, contact with a lot of people in the movie industry, and you've, you've played with a lot of uh, movie stars, and you've, I understand you've installed tables in their homes and whatnot. What can you tell us about that Melu out there? Well, uh, I wish that more people knew about it more. Uh, it's a shame that people don't realize uh, how many celebrities and top people in the movie industry are pool players, avid pool players, who have uh, tables in their home ranging anywhere from, uh, let's say, 1000 to $50,000. I mean, they have tables custom made just so that they could have a one-of-a-kind table. Can Wayne you name Newton some was, names for us? Sir? Well, Wayne Newton was one. He had a table made out of uh, crystal, I believe, that was in the neighborhood of $50,000. Fantastic. Are any of these people real, able players? Uh, there are several who play what I would say about average to the average pool player. I'm not saying in the uh, pro ranks, although I've heard there are a few who might be able to hold their own for a little while. Jackie Gleason or the late Jackie Gleason, I should say, was one of the players who uh, could probably hold his own for a little bit with some of the uh, lower-class professional players. Mm -hmm. 
Over the years, we've had some uh, successful billiard movies, of course. Uh, the perfect example being The Hustler, and of course now we have The Color of Money. And um, we've also had some dogs, let's face it, uh, The Baltimore Bullet. Yeah. Uh, but movie producers and writers seem to like the pool scene. Can you explain that? What's the fascination? Uh, the fascination is it adds another element, something that hasn't really been uh looked into in the way that other sports have been looked into. Uh, as you said, the Baltimore Bullet. The Baltimore Bullet turned out to be a farce as far as pool playing went, but we probably shot more pool in that movie than any other movie that was ever shot. Yet it was left on the editing floor because they decided they wanted to make it a tongue-in-cheek comedy, and uh, it seemed a little bit too not serious for what the editor had in mind, yet the writer had something totally different in mind when he did it. It's like uh, The Color of Money. The book turned out to be uh, something totally different than the actual picture itself. But God bless that movie. It sure pepped up it, the billiard for industry. For some reason, it just gave uh, probably the greatest shot in the arm since the movie The Hustler. And The Hustler was, uh, let's face it, the movie. If they were to bring it back today and show it on TV, business in my billiard room would double tomorrow. Uh, you've had a lot of excitement in your life, playing in all these major competitions, uh, being an advisor to various filmmakers and whatnot. Uh, how does it feel to run a day-to-day -day business like a, a billiard room? Well, Mort, uh, I've always been more into the family end of the business anyway. I, I, I like to deal with people a lot more than I do just going into play, although I love competition, don't get me wrong, I like dealing with people on a day-to-day -day basis. So actually, where I'm at right now, I love, I also love retail sales. Anytime I get a chance to close a deal on a billiard table, I love that too. That's great. Um, when you look back over your life and career, do you ever wish that you'd become a, uh, a rocket scientist or a brain surgeon, or are you relatively satisfied with your life as a billiard player and well uh, truthfully financially there are many things I wish I had done rather than play pool because pool still hasn't hit its peak yet and I think it's going to I really believe that someday uh, it's going to be a rude awakening for a lot of people in the world but they're going to realize that pool is a major sport and they're going to start playing a lot more uh, there are times I've even tried to get my son who is now playing professionally, away from the game of pool. Because I said the rewards are not great enough if you've got the ambitions and put them into a little different energy, a little different area, you're going to be a great businessman, you're going to be a success at whatever you do. And I think he'll be a success as a pool player too. But as you asked, uh, would I put my energies into a different area? Yes, I would. but. I've also been very happy and I've met some beautiful people in the game of pool and I, I don't think I'd change that part of it because uh, as I said I've met some great people and I don't think I would have met them had I been into some other endeavor. Well if you had a crystal ball that could look into pool's future, uh, do you see the game as a regular feature on television with uh, greatly enlarged prize lists and therefore uh, really lucrative careers for the pool players of the future? I do if, and I, I'm going to throw in a big if, if the billiard industry itself gets behind it and starts promoting tournaments for young, and I mean when I say young, I'm talking about from the age of six on up, young people, because young people is where the future of this game is, and if you get them started early enough, it's going to be inbred into them, and by the time they're in uh, junior high or high school, you're going to have some great pool players. And they're also going to have to change the laws in a lot of these states, which are archaic laws that uh, should have been off the books 100 years ago, where uh, they say you go into a billiard room or a bowling alley, as an example, and you can take your children in and bowl all day long, and off to the side they've got a billiard room, yet you can't take your children into that billiard room and play pool because they have to be 18 years of age. Uh, if they get these laws changed and start promoting the game at a younger level, I think pool has got a tremendous future in it. Okay, let's go back and take another look at that crystal ball. Uh, 
It's the year 2010, and pool is a regular feature on one of the networks, and the players are making a tremendous amount of money. Uh, they're idolized by all these fans. What game are they playing? I think the game that is going to be the game of the future, and it's here now, is nine ball because it's a very fast-paced game. I do think that at the professional level, they're going to have to change the rules of the game because there's got to be a dividing line that says, okay, if you miss a shot, you get punished. You don't get a reward for missing a shot. And today, the way the rules of nine ball are, you do get a reward for missing a shot. Because uh, even though the BCA has a set of rules which has it as a call ball game, uh, people are not playing it that way across the United States or across the world for that matter. And uh, I think that if they change that rule a little bit, there's going to be a fine line, dividing line between pro and amateur player, and it's still going to be enough that uh, people are stretching and trying to achieve this goal of becoming the pro player. Where right now all you have to do is put up your money and you're a pro player. Okay, uh, finally, let's go back to your role as the machine gun player. Uh, do you ever look back on some of those tournaments and remembering your rapid fire style of play, was there ever a time when you thought, oops, if I just take a little more time on that shot, I might have won this tournament? Well, I'm going to answer that as truthfully as I can, Mort. Yeah, there were probably 150 to 200 times in my life where I've said, oops, uh, you goofed again, Lou. You should have taken a little more time. And then there have been just as many times where by not taking too much time, I made what was a very difficult situation appear very easily uh, by jumping up and playing the shot real quick, making it, and not realizing how tough the shot was because I wouldn't allow myself time to think of how tough it was. Uh, I don't advise anyone to play pool fast, yet I don't advise them to slow their pace down either. Willie Moscone came up to me after one of my first tournaments and he said to me, Lou, a lot of people are going to come up to you and try to slow you down. And he said, uh, you will slow down with age. And I just celebrated the 12th anniversary of my 39th birthday and I have slowed down with age, believe it or not. Well, that concludes a, another terrific interview with Lou Batera. Uh, one of the game's greatest players and certainly its most articulate spokesman. Thanks Thank very much. My Luke. pleasure. Great.